Once you have created a collection or a series of collections and a number of items and added them to your collections, you may wish to begin creating exhibits using those items. The content in this video is also explained in a written tutorial that you can find here or in the description below these videos. If you'd like to follow the text in this video, make sure you've turned on closed captioning. Remember that if items and collections are the archive portion of Omeka, exhibits are the area where you can create a larger narrative about your items uh, for a public audience. You'll find the area for creating exhibits on the left-hand side of the dashboard, and I will click there to navigate to the Browse Exhibits page. To create an exhibit, you would click the green Add an Exhibit button, and on the page that follows, we need to add a little bit of information about the exhibit. So you might give it a title, and this title should reflect the overall narrative. So I might, for example, create an exhibit called uh, The History of Durham Architecture. So I've given it a title. I can then give it a slug. What is a slug? It is the unique identifier that will be added at the very end of a URL to identify this specific exhibit. And if you want your users to be able to find this exhibit quickly or remember the URL in the future, you might want to create a shorter slug than will be automatically created. This should be a series of words, uh, two to three at most, that provide uh, a description or some connection to the theme of your exhibit. So in this case, I'm going to call this Durham-Architecture. And note that you cannot have spaces or special characters, but you could choose to use uppercase letters if you want to. Under credits, I will list myself as the author. Make sure that you list all uh, names if you are working in a student group. And then a description is uh, the space where you will actually provide introductory text about your exhibit. Then, underneath tags, you can use the same tags that we'd, you would use for items to tag exhibits. This will help public users be able to move between and across lots of different kinds of content on the public side of your site. Under theme, you can choose uh, from any of the themes that are installed on the Omeka site. So you could, in effect, create your own exhibit uh, using a theme that is different from the appearance of the overall Omeka site. This may be useful if you intend to create exhibits that effectively exist independently of each other and where maybe you don't want your users necessarily going to the archive um, page or starting from that home page. You want them starting from the exhibit itself. I'm going to leave this as the current public theme, however, because I like the overall consistency of having the same theme used for the site, for the archive, and for the exhibits. Then in the top right, I can click Save Changes, and notice I can also check Public if I'm ready to publish my exhibit, or leave it private while I'm working on it. So I will Save Changes, and now if I return to the Exhibits page, I should find that my History of Durham, uh, Durham Architecture has been added at the bottom of this list. I can now delete it, and I can also now edit it. So I will click Edit. This will return me to the Exhibit Metadata page, and I can begin adding individual pages to the exhibit by scrolling to the bottom and clicking the green Add Page button. An exhibit in Omeka is simply a series of pages uh, that you structure uh, for your narrative. You could have only a few pages or you can have many pages. And in some themes, it's possible to uh, nest your pages. So you could use pages for major content uh, sections and then have within those pages sub pages for more specific information within a particular uh, section. So I will click Add Page.
And here we have a page title and slug as we did for the overall exhibit. So each page needs to have a title. So perhaps if I am doing the history of Durham architecture, I could begin at the beginning. I could start with uh, beginning of Durham. And then I could add a specific slug, perhaps I'll just say beginning. And now within a page architecture, I can have multiple content blocks. Each block has to be specified within one of these layouts. We have file with text, gallery, text, file, and in this case, Neatline. But you may not see uh, this button here unless you have Neatline installed. We will not be using uh, this particular layout, however, to embed Neatline exhibits within Omeka exhibits which can be a little bit confusing simply because the layout does not work well for our specific needs. So in this tutorial I will look only at the file with text, gallery, text, and file. If I click file with text and then scroll down I can add a new content block. And this block is defined by uh, a file, one or more items in this case, and then a section for text. I can click Add Item, and then I can search for the specific item or items that I want to include. Let's say, for example, I want to include a map of Durham as part of my beginning uh, narrative. So I will look for Show Search Form and then I can search my items by keyword, by specific identifier. Um, I can also look by collection type or by the user that created the specific um, item. I can also look for uh, featured or non-featured and I can search by exhibit. So remember that items can be used in multiple exhibits even though they can only appear within one collection. So you may have a project in which your uh, team members are creating their own exhibits and um, they're using some of your items in their exhibits and you're using your items and maybe some of their items in your exhibits. This information can be shared across exhibits multiple times and in multiple ways. So I will search for a map and enter to search. And now I see uh, I've got three different options. For right now, I will just choose this Durham NC key map and select item. Now I can add a caption if I want to, or I can just click apply. And this item has now been added to this page. And then I would include some kind of text narrative about the beginning of Durham and its first architecture. I could then add a second block if I wanted to, so a second section on the same page that maybe divides up the page into uh, multiple subsections. For now I will click Save and add another page to create a second page in my exhibit. Here again, I can create a page title, so maybe I will jump forward in time to talk about Duke University. The building of Duke University. And my slug might be just Duke. And then I could provide, let's say, a gallery of uh, images in this uh, case. So I will click again, add new content block. And I could go to items and add an item. And let's say I want to include an item for a number of different buildings, perhaps only on Duke's East Campus. So I will begin by searching for those items here, select item, and apply, and then maybe I will also add East Duke, apply, and so on, and so forth. When I'm satisfied with the number of items that I have, 
I can again add text beneath, but we'll see when we look at our um, exhibit on the public side that it will have been formatted slightly differently. Every content block has a section at the bottom called layout options and this section will vary slightly depending on the layout that you've chosen but overall um, you can use it to set whether or not you have one large image and that will generally be the first item that you choose for a gallery or if it's simply a series of thumbnails. If I leave it as no showcase file that will only give us a series of thumbnails. I can then select whether or not the gallery is on the left or on the right side of the page uh, in conjunction with any text that I might include here. So let me type in history of Duke. And then under gallery file size, I can choose between a square thumbnail making every image the same size thumbnail or simply a thumbnail which will just be a smaller version of the overall file. So that means that the file sizes may vary across the gallery. So it's up to you whether or not you want to have a uniform square gallery or if you want to show the entire image in a smaller size for every item. You can also choose the captions position, center, left, or right. Let's say I want to add a second block, maybe uh, including a map this time of East Campus. I can click File under Select Layout and add a new content block. And here, notice there's no text box, but only add an item page. I can then include this map for Trinity College, select item, and if I wanted to include a caption maybe I would call this the bud map and include just a little bit of metadata there. And again I have some layout options for just the file. And in this case, it's automatically going to show the file size as full size, but I could also just make it a thumbnail. Every item that you embed in an exhibit page will be clickable, and it can take the user away to that specific item page where they can look at a file in a larger size, uh, if that's what you want them to be able to do. So let's save changes. And now let's go to look at our exhibit. So I'm going to go back to the Exhibits Browse page and you can click on the history of Durham architecture in this case and this will take us to the public page where we can get a preview of our uh, exhibit. And then along the right hand side you should find um, each of the pages listed and I can select beginning of Durham and I can see that single item that I've added in and any kind of text, in this case automatically placed on the right hand side of the file with text. I can click on the image to go to that item page to find out more information and to see a larger version of the file. I can then go back to the exhibit and navigate to the next page And here we have a gallery, so this is our top content block. And notice I chose square thumbnails, so I have a series of four thumbnails. Each of these will click away to the specific images item page. Then I have some text on the right hand side. And then my second block is simply this file, so this image with a caption at the bottom. Now let's go back to the exhibit editing area and look at how we can structure our pages and also at how we can add an image to that front page. If I come back to description here and I can click on HTML and notice that in the HTML source editor I have introduction to this exhibit which is the text that I typed and then I have a series of symbols that are surrounding uh, that information. 
These are HTML tags. In this case, this is a tag pair for the HTML uh, tag set paragraph. If I wanted to add an image above, I can simply return down and on maybe the first line, I will add a totally separate HTML tag. And the syntax for that includes these angle brackets that enclose HTML tags. And then IMG for image, SRC, which stands for source equals. And this will tell uh, Omeka where to find the specific image that I want to include on my front page. So let me add two double quotations, and then within those quotations, I will include a specific image file. So I'll go to the item page, and notice I'm on the public side of the site, and then go to the specific file here. And then I'm going to copy the link that's in the top of the page, and you can't see that here, but I will paste it in to my HTML source editor in the edit exhibit area, paste. And what do we notice about this specific file uh, URL? Well, we know it's going to show us the image because it includes the file extension .jpg for the image at the very end. And this is our name encrypted by Omeka for this specific image file. Now I also want to include a little bit of information about the height and width of our image. I want to make sure that the image fits within uh, the width of the exhibit. So I will type space width equals and then within quotations 100% so that no matter how large or small uh, a user's window is, that map file will fill the width of the um, the screen within the exhibit. So then I can close that tag with a forward slash and an angle bracket and I will click update and now I should see my image file appear within the description box and I could go in and edit it if I wanted to by changing the size and I could still edit the content which is at the very bottom of this box. So now I will click save changes and view that public page again in a new tab and now I have an image. So this could be useful if you want to include say a banner image with your specific uh, exhibit introduction. One last piece of information is about structuring the pages. I'll go back to this edit exhibit page and look at the very bottom and now I have two pages listed under the exhibit metadata and I can click and drag them to reorder them or if you notice in the instructions I can nest them. Nesting means uh, creating a hierarchy. So I could take my building of Duke University page and if I pull it slightly to the right I can nest it or make it a subsection beneath the beginning of Durham. And then I could create a much larger section about the beginning of Durham that looks both at the university and at the evolution of the ta uh, tobacco industry. And then I could create a second uh, section, perhaps about uh, mid-century Durham, and move forward from there. So I will save changes, and we'll look one last time at our public page. And here, notice that it appears as if that second page has disappeared. But if we click on beginning of Durham to go to the first page, now we see a subsection building of Durham. And we can go back and forward. We can move around depending on what's shown in uh, the table of contents, in this case on the right hand side of this Omeka theme. Or we could go back to browse exhibits and look at other uh, exhibits for other examples.